In Module 5, we will discuss the relationship of pressure injuries and incontinence-associated dermatitis, also known as IAD. As a reminder, microclimate refers to the temperature, humidity, and airflow next to the surface of the skin. With an increase in temperature, humidity, and moisture, the skin becomes weaker, and there is an increase in friction at the surface of the skin. Understanding the connection. Pressure injuries and IAD share common risk factors and may happen at the same time. Research suggests that patients with IAD are four times more likely to experience a healthcare-acquired pressure injury in the sacral area than those without. Given this connection between IAD and pressure injuries, interventions for prevention and management should be complementary. According to the National Pressure Injury Advisory Panel, a preventative skincare regimen is critical for pressure injury prevention. Regimens should include cleansing of the skin with a pH balance product, moisturizing use of a barrier film or skin protectant, and use of high absorbency incontinence products. In addition to a thorough skin assessment and structured skincare regimen, the MPIAP and partner organizations recommend the addition of the following components to mitigate risk of pressure injury development. Bed linen and textile selection, nutrition assessment and management, repositioning and early mobilization, support surface selection and use, use of prophylactic dressings, device assessment and management, and education for clinician staff, patient, and family. Nutrition plays an important role in prevention and treatment of pressure injuries. Studies have found that patients with malnutrition are at a higher risk for pressure injury development. Patients may complain about lack of appetite and demonstrate no interest in food, which may be due to altered cognitive status, the side effects of medication or underlying medical conditions, and or the ability to feed themselves. These physical and cognitive limitations may impact nutritional intake and require the assistance of others. Interventions include the assessment of nutritional status with a screening tool, monitoring intake, and creating an individualized nutritional care plan for patients with or at risk of malnutrition. It is important to involve a registered dietitian or nutritionist to create a plan that includes caloric, protein, hydration, and nutrient goals. Reducing friction and shear is another important concept when creating a positioning plan. Keeping the bed as flat as possible is the first step. Elevating the knees slightly will also prevent sliding down in bed and decrease the pressure on the sacral area. Of course, the patient's clinical needs and comfort must be considered when determining the patient's position. Use low-friction textiles and minimize the layers of linen. Lift the patient to reduce friction and shear. Assistive devices like mechanical lifts and transfer sheets may help with safe, low-friction patient repositioning and transfers. Support surfaces. Selection of a proper support surface can play a vital role in prevention, as they should meet the individual's needs for pressure redistribution based on level of immobility and inactivity, need to influence microclimate, shear reduction, patient size and weight, location and severity of existing pressure injuries, and risk for developing new pressure injuries. Another component of a pressure injury prevention program includes the use of prophylactic dressings. Multi-layer silicone foam dressings have been found to protect individuals at risk of pressure injuries. When selecting a silicone foam dressing, consider appropriateness of size and shape, ability to manage microclimate, ease of application and ability to stay in place, and ability to access and assess skin. When implementing the use of a multi-layer foam in a prevention program, ensure that other interventions, such as repositioning, are maintained. Education. Involving patients and their families in pressure injury prevention planning is crucial and can play an important role in patient compliance. Explain the prevention plan, including interventions such as repositioning, the need for routine skin assessments, and the importance of alerting the staff with observations such as a change in skin condition or new areas of discomfort. Thank you for watching Module 5, where we discuss the relationship between skin integrity and pressure injuries. Text. 
Thank you. 3M. Science. Applied to life. Copyright 3M 2022. All rights reserved.